Since the next phase of the nursing process is analysis, we will look at analysis questions next. Remember that during the phase of analysis, the nurse must identify actual or potential health care needs or problems based on the assessment data obtained. Therefore, analysis questions require you to validate, prioritize, interpret, or organize relevant data or manifestations. Because analysis questions require you to apply your knowledge of pathophysiology, they are often most difficult. When answering questions about analysis, keep in mind that they may include identification or prioritization of a nursing process. When answering analysis questions, it is critical that you have correctly identified the issue of the question. For example, be sure to focus on the issue of the question if you are asked for rationale. The rationale for bed rest for a client with a thrombophlebitis may vary greatly from that of a client with a threatened abortion. So let's look at an example of an analysis question. Let's separate the case scenario from the stem of the question. To do so, we will need to restate the question in our own words because the case scenario and stem seem to run together. So, the case scenario tells us that the nurse is caring for a client who is recovering from a craniotomy for a pituitary tumor. The stem of the question asks, the nurse gives the highest priority to which assessment binding? The key words are highest priority. The client is the client who is recovering from a craniotomy for a pituitary tumor. The issue is priority assessment binding after a craniotomy. The type of stem is a priority response stem. So now we need to look at and eliminate distractors. Like many questions about the analysis phase of the nursing process, this is a good example of a priority question where at first glance not only do all the answers look right, but we know that they all would apply to the post-craniotomy client. In option one, increased urinary output. We will put a plus sign here. We know that a serious complication following craniotomy for a pituitary tumor is diabetes insipidus. An early manifestation of DI is increased urinary output. Let's see if there is a more concerning finding. Option two, hypoactive bowel sounds. Although this is not a normal finding, Neither is it very unusual in a client recovering from major surgery. But remember that anesthesia, prolonged periods of NPO, and decreased activity all tend to slow down the bowel activity in post-surgical clients. Let's see if there is a better finding. Option three, periorbital edema. Although this is not a normal finding, Neither is it very unusual in a client recovering from either facial or cranial surgery, but remember that the inflammatory response will tend to encourage edema of soft tissue, such as that around the eyes, known as periorbital. Look at option four, frontal headache. Although this is not a normal finding, remember that the inflammatory process associated with pain, especially in the area of surgical incision, would be found in a patient recovering from either facial or cranial surgery. Because we have three possibly right answers and one probably right answer, choice one, we go with what we know and choose choice one, increased urine output as the correct answer. Now, let's look at the next phase of the nursing process, planning.